Hey everybody, Kyle Goat here from GoatFilmReviews.com and the Goat Film Reviews YouTube channel, and I've got my first reaction to the new film, A Quiet Place, Day One. This is directed by Michael Sarnoski, I think I'm saying that right, um, who directed Pig um, with Nicolas Cage just a couple years ago. Kind of a strange choice because he uh, came in and wrote and directed this third installment of the A Quiet Place franchise. This one, of course, does not feature John Krasinski or his family playing John Krasinski's character or his family's characters. This is a standalone story set on the first day of the inv invasion of whatever these things are. Um, so we follow Lupita Nyong'o. She plays a character who is, 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 I believe, suffering from cancer, is dying, and she decides she wants to go and get pizza because she knows that she will not live much longer and the world is ending. So she wants to go get a piece, slice of pizza before the end has arrived. And so she's making her way across New York to go to this pizza place, which I know sounds kind of silly, but I think it's done in an earnest way. And I think a lot of people tend to think if you are looking for, if you're looking for um, safety, if you believe, you know, like a lot of people are gonna be going to safety if this kind of invasion were to happen. But a person who's already, you know, on the clock, running out of time, might look for something to create joy, to to bring back that happiness. And so I kind of get her motivation quite a bit. Um, it's a peculiar story just because it's not something I think we've seen done in this way before. But um, with a, a capable director behind, he, there's some interesting action sequences. There are no, thing about it is there are very few standout sequences in the film as far as it goes. There's just a lot of them being hunted, which is fine. Um, but, you know, you think of certain things from A Quiet Place 1 and 2 that you see those standout moments. This one ha is more of kind of a breakneck pace trying to to basically get to that ending portion. So the, as far as set pieces goes, it's not uh, a drastically kind of different style to it. It's just, it's more of what we've seen, but it's good. And I think what wins here is that we don't often get movies that focus on characters in this way during like a big budget action film. And I think the, the focus on the characters, the focus on their journey trying to get to this pizza shop makes the film incredibly watchable. Um, and those, those set pieces, while they don't stand out, are still very tense. They're still very exciting. They're still very uh, engaging. But they, you know, like, even though they don't have that, like, stand out feeling to them, they're still very entertaining all the way through. So I quite enjoyed what I saw in A Quiet Place Day 1. Um, I will say that if you're going to the movie looking for an explanation for what's going on, because they kind of, when, when you say you're doing Day 1, people think, okay, well, they're going to explain these monsters. They give a little bit more info, I guess you could say, but I don't think they give much. And if you're going specifically for that, you will be disappointed. Um, this is, just see it as another Quiet Place movie. Um, another story, new characters, but the same world. And I think you could conceivably come up with some interesting ways of utilizing this idea without it being dragged along. Like, there was something I was thinking about about halfway through this movie. Like, I wonder if they, if they could make a whole movie about something and then it, it occurred later on in this film so clearly like somebody else had an idea about that too and, and thought let's let's work that into the story of them heading to this pizza place um yeah i think it's joseph quinn is that the guy's name uh he plays kind of these the other character in the film it's literally just her and, and him um and then there's also a uh a cat that she has that uh, is, is named frodo in the film uh her name is i think samira um and she's got a cat named Frodo. And so uh, as a cat owner, I think most of my attention was directed towards protecting the cat. I think that's fair. Um, and less so about worried about the humans, but I think I was enthralled because of the way that the characters were laid out because of that. So while the film doesn't have those big quiet place beats um, in terms of something that's really gonna make this film overly memorable from an action standpoint, I think it stands out from a character standpoint um, and proves that this franchise is not running out of steam and that it's not just squeezing what it can out of the franchise. You've got a good director who can capably focus on characters and you have him and you give him a budget and he turns something worthwhile in. So I, I quite enjoyed A Quiet Place day one and I'm excited to see where this franchise goes next time. Um, I'd like to see us get to part three of the main story because I feel like that's not done yet. I feel like that's not a finished story yet. So I'd like to see them finish that off. 
Um, but it was, it, I would also totally be open to exploring other areas of this story, especially in the way that this film kind of ties into characters and elements from A Quiet Place Part 2. I was really interested in that, too. That was a, that was a cool little way of, of circling around back to that origi- or those original films and tying them together without, without the need to, you know, point it out. You know, without the need to really aggressively, like, hammer home that this is the same universe. You don't need to do that, and I think the film is smart enough not to. So those are my thoughts on A Quiet Place Day 1. I quite recommend the film. Uh, go ahead and let me know the co- your thoughts on the film down below in the comments section. While you're down there, please like and subscribe. They're two free things that can help you support the channel immensely, and you never miss episodes of the show as they drop. You can also find GoatFilmReviews.com for my many written reviews. You can find Goat Film Reviews on Facebook. You can follow me personally at Almighty Goatman on Twitter, Instagram, Letterboxd, and Threads. You can find my show Kyle and Nick on Film that I co-host with Nick Palachuk from the St. Paul Filmcast. We have new episodes of that show every single week. You can also find uh, more reviews not just mine, but others, at the Minnesota Film Critics Alliance. We've got a link to that page down in the description of this video. Thank you so much for joining me, and we'll see you next time.